Earlier this year, NVIDIA released a new performance monitoring and tuning software which was incorporated in their drivers. It has a neat one-click auto overclocking feature built into it. But is this auto tuning feature even helpful? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. A while back, NVIDIA incorporated a new performance tuning section into their GeForce drivers and GeForce Experience software. It's kind of similar to what AMD has in their Adrenaline drivers. Honestly, I'm quite surprised it took NVIDIA this long to implement something like this, whereas AMD has had this since like 2013 with the old Catalyst Control Center. Regardless, enthusiasts and gamers have been relying on third-party software such as MSI Afterburner, EVGA Precision X1, ASUS GPU Tweak 2, and more to get the most out of their silicon. It's probably why you hardly saw anyone really talking about it. I've personally been using MSI Afterburner when it comes to overclocking and undervolting my GPUs. Not for any particular reason, I just find it has a simple straightforward layout for tuning, it's got a section where you can edit your overlay's appearance, and it's the one I've just become accustomed to. And normally I would just ignore using any other overclocking software, and it's mainly why I also didn't bother with the overclocking section from NVIDIA. It just doesn't seem like you can really go in depth with tuning and doesn't have many overlay options as MSI Afterburner does since it incorporates Riva Tuner statistics and you can also get monitoring data from something like Hardware Info. However, if there was one feature that did pique my curiosity, it was the one-click auto overclocking feature. Essentially, with a click of a button, it will automatically tune and overclock your GPU to get a bit more performance out of it. This takes into account things like your GPU silicon quality, thermals, and power headroom. I want to see if this new auto overclocking feature is any good, and and if it can even compare with a manual overclock. In order to use this feature, it's pretty simple. You'll want to download the latest NVIDIA drivers that are available for your GPU, and along with the drivers, you'll also need to install GeForce Experience because that is where NVIDIA has implemented this new performance feature section. I know, sucks. Some of you will probably hate that, and you're probably wondering why they don't combine the two to make a more modern software suite like AMD. It's beyond me, but hey, you do you, NVIDIA. Once you've done that, you'll also want to enable the GeForce Share Overlay, which can be found in the GeForce Experience Settings menu. After that, you'll want to press Alt plus Z, and it will bring up the overlay screen. From there, you'll want to click on Performance. This will open up a performance menu that will show you a bunch of stats and metrics such as GPU temps, frequency, usage, and more. Then at the bottom, you'll find three sliders, voltage, power, and temperature. You'll want to max these out so that when you run the automatic tuning feature, it has all the headroom and power available to work with so that it can optimally tune your GPU. Then you just want to click on apply and then click on enable automatic tuning. This will then initiate a scan which will take a bit of time as it runs a few various tests and loads on the GPU in the background to gauge just how far it can take the silicon. You'll hear the GPU ramp up its fans when it's running its scan so don't worry, that's normal. I did this on my test bench which is using an ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3090 and it ran for about 30 minutes before finally giving me a result. After the scan was complete, it applied a plus 97 MHz overclock to the GPU core, which actually isn't too bad because from my manual tooling in MSI Afterburner, the furthest I was able to take the GPU without any crashes was plus 110 MHz. Also, since we're on that subject, you're also going to want to take some time to stress test this overclock to assure that it's actually stable. One thing you have to remember when it comes to the way NVIDIA graphics cards boost is that they generally boost higher than what's advertised given power and thermal headroom. For example, my MSI RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio has an advertised boost clock of 1815 MHz out of the box, but it would boost to around 1900 MHz if not even more, so the clock speeds listed are pretty conservative from the manufacturers. Also, the other thing I noticed was that this auto overclocking section doesn't touch the GPU memory, which you can obviously tune with something like MSI Afterburner and potentially get even more performance. So that's what we're going to be doing. After GeForce Experience applied an overclock to my RTX 3090, I ran some benchmarks and then ran those benchmarks again with the card at stock, and then ran them again with my own manual overclock in MSI Afterburner. Alongside my plus 110 MHz OC to the core, I had also applied a plus 800 offset 
to the memory. This will allow us to see just how much of a more boost we can get for performance when we also take into account memory overclocking. Before we get into the results, I just wanted to quickly run through the rest of the test system specs. For the CPU, we've got an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X, which is cooled by a Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 AIO. For the RAM, we've got four 8GB sticks of Patriot Viper Steel DDR4 3600CL14 memory. The motherboard is an MSI X570 Unify. For our SSD, we've got a 2TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus, and powering all the components is an EVGA 1000G3 power supply. Moving on to the results, and we're going to go by them pretty quickly because they are really self-explanatory and not that exciting. Hence, I only benchmarked 4 titles to get the point across. For our first title, we've got Red Dead Redemption 2 at 4K, and I've also benchmarked all the rest of the titles at 4K since I want to be primarily GPU bound in this scenario with ultra settings of course. And here we can see that the performance differences between all three configurations is quite small. The auto overclock gave us a 1% improvement over our stock configuration, while our manual overclock was only about 4% faster than the auto OC result. Next we have Far Cry 6 and we have more of the same. The performance difference between auto OC and the manual OC results was just 2%. In Forza Horizon 5 that's a 1% difference and in Shadow of the Tomb Raider we see a 3% difference, although compared to stock in this title, there is a 7% improvement, though it's really not anything noticeable, especially not in a title like this one. Now, your mileage may vary, obviously, your GPU might be able to OC even further than mine. It doesn't necessarily seem like my RTX 3090 has that much headroom left to begin with, and overclocking it doesn't even seem worth it for the insignificant gains, while power consumption goes through the roof, making temps rise and thus creating more noise. Even though this RTX 3090 is supposed to be one of the top tier custom models, my goodness, did it sound like an absolute jet engine taking off. It just wasn't worth it. Focusing on the actual auto-tuning and overclocking feature, I think it's great that Nvidia has finally given users this option. If you're someone who doesn't necessarily want to take the time to manually overclock their GPU and fine-tune settings for yourself using third-party software, and just want a quick and easy route, then this is actually not a bad option. Alternatively, you can also use this feature as a starting point for your GPU overclocking journey since it tends to be a bit conservative, and then you can use third-party software and take that overclock a little bit further. I just think it's great that there are some more ways available for the user to take full advantage of their hardware and get the most out of their GPU if they wish to do so. But that will do it for this one, just thought I'd make a quick video exploring this feature since many people including myself were curious to see if it was any good. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.